Hello and welcome to Deb's Digest. Today we're going to transplant the seedlings into their jars. And the reason why I'm able to do that now is because you can see the little roots are coming up. And they're stuck to the bottom of the rock wool, but when I put them in the jars, they will seek for water and they will stretch out and go right into the water of the jars. At least that's my experience. This one didn't do so well when it was indoors. I didn't catch it on time. I didn't bring it out on time. It got too leggy. This one right here suffered from a very hot day that we had out here. It's been 97 degrees out here. So first I'm gonna show you how to mix the solution before they start to flower, which these won't flower because they're not tomatoes, but I use this General Hydroponics Maxi Grow that I bought from Amazon. And it takes one to two teaspoons per gallon. I have a half a gallon here, so I'm gonna put one teaspoon of this in here. That wasn't quite a teaspoon. I'm gonna just put a little bit more. All right. And then we're going to stir that up. I will be right back. I'm going to go get my water testing kit. So I use this to test the pH in the pool. And you don't have to do this. I just did this for my own curiosity one day. We're going to test the pH of this water. So, fill it up to that line there, and then I get this, put five drops in it, and like I said, you don't need to do this. I'm just showing you what happens to the pH. My pool water is generally pretty high in pH. This looks like it is in a very good range. So, <coughs> When, I, when I'm uh, taking care of my pool water, I don't want it to be this color. I want it to be that color. But for our plants, you want it under 7.0. Now, if this was higher, and at times it has been, I would just add a little bit of lemon juice, like an eighth of a teaspoon, and that would move the pH down enough. Okay, so that's a little bit about pH. Now what I'm going to do is take this jar and I'm going to fill it up with water, but not to the top. I'm going to fill it to where the water is just barely touching the bottom of the net cup. This net cup is uh, by Grow Pro Net and it's a three inch net cup. I bought these on Amazon as well. So I pour the water in. Put the net cup in there and kind of gauge where it's at. I think I might have done this on another video last year, but it bears repeating. Okay, you can kind of see a film there. In fact, I have a little too much water. It's just a little too high. You want, you want it just barely touching the net cup or even a little bit below it. Just so that when the roots find the water and it starts drinking, when the roots start drinking, it'll leave a little air space between the top of the water and the bottom of the plant and that will give it the oxygen that it needs. And hydroponics, like if you go to the Living on the Land ride at Disney, you'll see that they've got like these uh, things, pumps and stuff to pump air into the water. But with the Kratky method, not needed. 
All right, so I'm going to plant my, this says lettuce on this side, but it's really kale, which we had marked, and it wore off. I see the K there, but I'm going to mark it again. Kale, and that just goes right in there. Push it all the way to the bottom so the root can find the water when it's needing it. Now, until the roots find the water, I'll keep watering it from the top. It's going to take a few days for the roots to find the water, so I'll, I'll just keep giving a little bit of water from the top like I've been the last few days. <clears throat> this will go inside my bathroom window. I have some ice block window with some good sun, so this is going to go in that windowsill. I don't know how it'll work. We'll see. <coughs> okay, so now let's plant one of our arugulas. Here's one right here. Almost there. Okay, this time I made it perfectly. Stick that in there. I'm going to take this paper and move it back down because it's kind of going to block the light. Being a little too high above the plant. All right, so that will go in my bathroom window. And I will show you now, here's a jar of dill. There's a story associated with this. Uh, my neighbor is growing dill in her backyard garden in her little uh, square foot garden in the back behind her house. And so she gave me a little bit and I just took them right out of the soil. I have two plants here, I took them right out of the soil and stuck them in a cracky jar. The water was full, I don't know if you can see this. Can you get that? A good picture of that. The water was full to the bottom of this and these little dill plants have already had uh, consumed, has already con they have already consumed half of the water. So that is working. This I've been keeping in my kitchen window. So uh, this is a uh, half gallon jar and I was using these last uh, summer in my kitchen window to grow kale which worked really well under some LED lighting and we painted the jar this dark color to keep the algae from growing and that has worked well and this is a new experiment with the socks we'll see if that works and now I'll plant these later I'm going to plant a few more plants how are we doing with our time Tanner, how much time have we taken up here? Can't tell uh, if the stick is in the way. Okay. So this is, again, just for reminder's sake. Can you get a good view of that? So this is by Grodin. I ordered these on Amazon. Two and a half by, I mean, two inches by two inches by 1.5 inches of rock wool. It's not very expensive. I think I paid um, probably 11, nine or 11 dollars for these. Seems like. I just break apart like that. And I think I'm going to grow six more seedlings. They, br they give you gloves so you don't, you know, it's like fiberglass so you don't cut your fingers, but I never had any problem with it. Okay. So I'm going to grow two endive. Two kale. No, let's do three kale. And one arugula, because I've already got, you can, you can only eat so much arugula because it's so spicy. So, there we go. 
And my seeds are right here. I got the endive from probably Lowe's. The arugula I got from uh, Ace Hardware. And then I got the kale. It's the Dwarf Blue Curled Scotch Kale. Hopefully I can find this with another supplier or Sustainable Seed will um, sell their company to somebody who will keep their operation going because they just are selling their operations after the California fires. So sad. Okay, so now I'm going to completely moisten these blocks. Can you see the little planting holes in the middle of the blocks? These ones didn't quite show up, but these ones have them. Maybe I have this upside down. Oh, that's why. Yep. So three of our blocks are going to say their names upside down. Okay. Well, I don't have very many endive left, actually. I have just enough for this project, and that's it. Hopefully they made them in there. We'll see. If, they even, if they're good seeds, we'll get two. If they're not, we won't get any. Because we're down to the wire on those. Okay, let's do the kale next. Arugula, this is kale. Just throw them in that little hole there. Scrape them into that little hole, yeah. It's like golfing, yeah. Finger golfing. Ah, there we go. Give it a better chance there. Okay, like I put 10 seeds in this thing. All right. And the arugula, we're almost done. Okay, there's that. Now we're gonna take you over and show you just a comparison between the Kratky method and the pot, the patio method. So you can see a difference. These were planted from my neighbor's garden on the same day. And they look basically the same. Not a whole lot of difference. And um, I think that's it for today. So if you have any questions or comments, things that you'd like to share, I hope you find this interesting. Um, let me know. And I hope you have an awesome day. Thank you very much.